Okay. Yeah. Amen. Love y'all. Good evening, brothers and sisters. This is Minister Isaiah Robson. Once again, we will continue our series on putting God first or last. Before we could continue with that, we're going to go to a, a quick prayer. Amen. Amen. Father God, I come to you once again, Father God, in prayer, Father God. Asking you to walk with me and be with me, Father God, as I do this class, Father God, that the words that come out of my mouth be pleasing unto you, Father God, that the words that come out today from, from your leaders, Father God, that be touching and empowering to people, our guests who, who join us tonight, Father God, on social media, Father God. Father God, I ask you to continue to give us the strength, the guidance, and the, guidance and the wisdom, Father God. Father God, I just continue to be with me today, tonight, Father God, as I continue on my personal journey, journey Father God. Just deliver your word to family, friends, and people on social media, Father God. And I pray that everybody I have to get in touch with and walk with, Father God, that I leave an encouraging word, Father God. Not encouraging because of me, Father God, but encouraging because of you, Father God. Father God, as we do this lesson tonight, Father God, as you be with each and every one to be on this line, each and every one of your teachers and leaders, Father God, that you continue to strengthen us, Father God. As we continue to reach out for your sheep, Father God, and bring them along, our Father God, that you cover them with your love and your mercy. I say this in your son, first name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Everybody, brother, sister, and people on social media, so uh, this is Minister Isaiah Robinson. I will be teaching tonight on the top, top uh, first, last, which place do you put God? My scripture reading is Proverbs 4, 23, 2 Corinthians 1 and 9, Matthew 5 and 8, and 1 John 3, 21 and 22. My subtopic is God first. When you put God first, all other things fall to their proper place. Drop out of our lives or our love of the Lord will govern the claim for affection demanding on our time. The interest we pursue in the order of our priorities. When we put God first, our promises to bless our lives and make us prosperous. Our lives will increase with peace and put God first as our top priority. Amen. Amen. We as we as we go on to this next series, the continuation of the series we've been speaking on, putting God first, a last in our life. We're gonna focus more today on putting God first. Uh, we're gonna have, have some quick scripture reading. I like somebody to read. A matter of fact, I'm gonna open up. I'm gonna read um, Proverbs four and twenty three. I'm gonna do that for the NIV version. And I ask somebody, uh, they got his, uh, King James, another version, actually read after me, please. I have. Proverbs 3, 23. Above all else, guard, guard our hearts. For everything you do flows from it. Amen. Does anybody have another version on this? Proverbs. Proverbs. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Okay, I have it in the uh, chapter 5, verse and he said, watch over your hearts with all diligence, for from it flows the spring of springs of life. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? King James. Amen. Anyone else? Anybody the King James first? Those Proverbs. Yes. 423. 4 and 23. 4 and 23. 4 and 23. Coming out the King James Version and it reads. 4 and 23 says, Keep thy heart with all dignity. <laughs> For out of it are issues of life. Amen. Amen. Anyone else have another version? Okay. So what so what is he trying to what is he trying to sell us in this here particular verse as far as like keeping our hearts in our bodies and serving him? That's probably what he's saying. 
Anybody, what is, what is he, what is he trying, what is his uh, descriptions uh, reaching out to us? What is it saying to us? Anyone? Amen. Well, from the King James Version, from the King James Version, God bless. I'm Elder Washington Jenkins from the King James Version. Is telling us to guard our hearts. Guard mm -hmm. our hearts. Because if our hearts is not uh, uh, guarded, we have, we, we have issues with the heart. And our hearts dictate, our hearts dictate if we're going to keep God first mm -hmm. in our life. Remember, the, uh, the topic is keeping God first yes. in, in our lives. If we are allow uh, our hearts to be uh, the, help me with this Holy Spirit the heart that God give us we will be able to have uh, uh, the right relationship with him I think I'm going right with this it says keep thy heart with all dignity for out of it are the issues of life so if your heart is not right, your life is not going to be right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I also think it means having love and trust and not, be, not having a judge through heart, having a pure understanding heart. I wrote something here that said, to put God first means to love him more than anyone or anything else. It means to choose my attitude, my value, my responses, and how I use my time with him. Let's keep it, that's part of keeping a pure heart. Keeping up, being, keeping an understanding what your Lord and Savior and keeping out malice and just being pure. And when you, as you deal with people, as you deal with individuals, that you keep going with a clean heart without no malice, without no hate, without no jealousy, without no anger. It's, come, it's okay. Okay. We have a, uh, Got Brother Bud up there, Brother Bud. Pastor Teresa. Who? Pastor Teresa. Okay, uh, okay, I see both hands. Okay, go, uh, go ahead, Pastor. <clears throat> Pastor. Oh. Yeah, I'm here. Good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Proverbs four twenty three. Mm -hmm. Um. My ampl the amplified version, I think one of y'all read it, but I had to read it again. Watch over your heart with all diligence. From it flows the spring of life. Uh, what it means is we have to social media, virtual classroom to understand that once every, your mind, your ears is your is your entrance way to hearing. Your eyes is an entrance way, and your mouth is an entrance way. Because when you say things, you hear it. Sometimes you see it. God is saying we have to watch our heart. And why he stresses that is because even after you say things, you see things and you hear things, your mind will start rehearsing it and it will start be playing like a movie. Mm -hmm. Then it will go down as you keep pondering and meditating on it, whether it's good or bad. Your actions, that's why it says, from it flows the spring of life, meaning any you're gonna it's gonna show up in your life. Either you're gonna make a decision, either you're gonna do something out of your mindset. A lot of us live out of our minds. Your life, you you have made decisions based on what you think. If you all all of us, if you think about your life now, why are you living the way you are living? Don't nobody answer, just let it sit. But you got to think about it according to this scripture. Why are you doing the things that you are doing? Why are you saying the things that you are saying? Why are you watching the things that you are watching? Why are you listening to certain people the way that you listen to them and give them the time that you give them? Because all of these elements, just as spirits transfer, all of these elements become a part of you and out of it. And so God wants us to guard the heart because even when you think 
that it's harmless. It can be dangerous to your spiritual health as well as when it comes out, when you start to act upon something or respond or put you in a situation, you wondering, I can't believe I did that. Oh, because of something you heard, something someone said to you that got in, transferred to you, something you saw later on in life, it came out. So that's why God says you have to guard your heart with all diligence. It's like watching an infant, the way that we guard over an infant you have to guard over your heart. You have to clean the heart. You have to nourish the heart. You have to be willing to let the heart, if you want that, your heart of yours to grow rightly, keep the word in. That's why it's important when, when the Lord tells us with this scripture, as well as when he says to renew our mind because of these three interests that we have, your eye gate, your ear gate, and your mouth gate. Your mind starts to ponder and it shares with your heart. Once it get in the heart, it becomes a part of you and it will come out whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not, if it get to that, your mind, if it get to the, um, to the, to the gatekeeper, your mind, it done gone through the gates, either your mouth, your ears or your eyes. And then once it talk to the mind, and the mind take it on down and you keep it and you keeping it in there in your central nervous system and your mind spiritually. It's going to get it's going to be a part of you. And what's a part of us, it comes out just like when we show our light. Amen. 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 Brother Bob. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, you know, when we were younger, they always told us to follow our heart. I remember when I was younger and I always thought that was the right answer to go that way, which I found out many times it wasn't the right answer. Jeremiah 17 verse nine, it says the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? That's what Jeremiah 17 9 says you know things that come out of our heart like we said we have to guard our heart because easily our heart can deceive us and that's what jeremiah says it's very easily deceived that's why we pray and seek god's face and his word amen, amen. amen. uh uh who is the minister rose Amen. Amen. Agreeing with what Elder Buzz said. Very good. That was very good. But also, to add to what all has been said, we have to remember that when the Bible speaks of the, the, the heart, it's actually talking about the mind. Yes. But that's why I said uh, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we have to be very careful what we put in our mind. It, 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 and what's in our mind becomes what we thrive on. And we know that our heart is what keeps us going and keeps us thriving. And our mind keeps us going and thriving spiritually. Once the devil has gotten control of your mind, he got you. Because once a sin, you got a sin begins with a thought. And once that thought has manifested, it goes into to action, and it that's when it actually becomes mm -hmm. a threat to our soul when it goes into action. That's why it tells us, so is a man thinking, so is he. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful and guard that mind, guard that mm -hmm. the heart of your mind. Your mind is the nuclear of our soul. It's like the nuclear of our body is the is the natural heart. So when it was translated, the word translated in the English language, that word was translated to heart, which it was actually meaning your mind, your thought. So we have to be very careful of what we think and what we, you know, uh, uh, what we do, like Pastor Teresa said, because once if what we put in front of our eyes, because once they get into our mind and sink it into us, that's when we start acting out and it becomes a thing. Right. Amen. 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 
uh, growing up, we always talk about the heart, but when we talk about the heart, you talk about the mind. And when we, when we discuss, when people talk about God knows my heart, you actually talk about your mind. So everything comes to your mind. So when you speak up your heart, you speak it up your mind. And the decisions you make, it comes from your mind. You feel it in your heart, but, also, but it mainly comes from your mind. And you got, you got to be understanding of that. And you got to be on key with You got to understand that because it's decisions you make coming from your mind. It's got a lot of judgment involved with it. So you got to be on your, on your toes, on guard, the things that come to your mind and come from your mouth. But we're getting that, the thing I'm getting that though, what is pleasing to God? What are we going to do? What are we doing pleasing to God? Because we know what the heart and mind to do. The attacks from the demon, the devil we have, but us through our mind, what pleasing things can we do for God as we examine ourselves from our heart and our mind, because we, every move we make from a mind or heart, it, it carries evil and it carries good. But what are the things we're gonna do when we walk with, as we, if we walk with God, what are we gonna do? How do we combat the temptation of doing bad when we're trying to walk with God? How do we combat the, the voices that come in our ears that shows us evil what we want to show good and what we God. How do we combat these things? Because what we what we're trying to find out, what we're trying to do, how we do what we do, can we do to please God? Because we always gonna eventually we're always gonna stay under attack. That devil's always under attack. He uses our friends, he uses our family, we can't we under a constant attack. So what can we do or how do we do to please what do we do to please God to walk with God? That's one thing we have to conquer in this here flesh. Amen. Uh, anybody have anything to say on that? Okay. Yeah. All right, man. So we're going to move on to um, go with uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Got to get a reader for that. I can read it. Let me find it. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. Yes. Amen. All right. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Anybody have another version? Yeah. Anybody trying to keep taking over here? <laughs> okay. Uh, I can read it. Um, I want to make sure I got it right. So can you repeat it again? Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter nine, verse seven. All right. Amen. And it reads, "Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under some was that conclusion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and delights in the one whose heart is in his gift." Amen. Amen. Does anybody have another version? I have the NIV version here. I read it. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Um, anybody got to fill it up? I see whose hands is that? Um, is that Brother Bud? Yes. I'm okay, gonna go. leave my I'm gonna leave my mic on this time because it seems like I can't get in quick enough. No, you fine. Um, yeah, and I was trying to go a little bit slower on the on the scriptures that we read them, so I could already have them in front of me. Um, okay, for Second Corinthians, chapter nine, verse seven, yeah. says you must each decide in your heart. Both in your ears. <laughs> 
Somebody got their mic, turn their mic off. Okay. Try, try again. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or give in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Amen. 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 That's a new New Living Translation. Amen. Amen. That district to tell us, um, I guess that's part of what we do in our everyday life, for like giving and receiving and giving from the heart and giving things reluctantly. Reluctantly, excuse me for pronunciation, but we all we all tend to deal with that sometimes. We I think we all on here like to be given cheerfully, but we also give judgmentally. So when we when we give, sometimes we're judging when we give. It's not coming from the, the righteousness and the goodness of a heart. We give it reluctantly, you know, because we give it with doubt. And that's, a, that's something else we got to combat in our spirit, you know what I'm saying? So when you give, so it's better not to give at all to get, than to give with reluctance. You know what I'm saying? If your heart's not cheerful, and you're not going to have a cheerful heart and, and give it with love, with God in your heart and mind, and just give it, and then you, then other than handing me, handing you something or giving you something, doing something for you. But in my heart, it's tell my heart has got grudgingly, I'm grudgingly in my heart for giving these things. Yeah. You know, so, very good. Let's mind for those things. Amen. So, anybody got a comment on this? Amen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, um, uh, Apostle. Amen. I just wanted to add to this. Uh, I love this scripture. It's a good scripture because it makes you just think of, you know, when people, you know, are giving, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, we have to be very careful, you know, just because somebody else is giving, you know, that doesn't always mean that that we have to give. If, you were, if you're not going to give out of the kindness of your heart then, you know, don't give at all, you know, because, you know, like the scripture said, you know, you know, God loves a cheerful giver, you know, he don't want us to, to give and then grumble and complain and then say, well, I gave, you know, but I didn't really want to give, you know, then mm -hmm. just, just leave it alone and not give at all, you know, mm -hmm. so that just kind of comes to mind. And sometimes, you know, we can want to be um, competitive, you know, I've uh, seen people in their giving just because a person mm -hmm. gave 10 oh since they gave 10 i'm gonna beat their giving and i'm gonna give 15 you know it's like no god you know is not in that so we got to be very careful about that when it comes mm -hmm. to giving mm -hmm. i um well who elder marshall well god bless god bless we have to remember when it's when we're giving we're giving ourselves to God. Sometimes we be gradually by giving our all to God. You know, we 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 always talk about finances and other things, but are we really giving our total total alliance to God? Are we gradually giving half of ourselves to God? Are we are we uh, uh, not giving? God, our fully attention, you know, God want us to give ourselves, and, and, and sometimes when we give, we give, we be complaining about our talents and our gifts and our time, you know, it all comes from the heart. Are we really putting God first? Because if, when it's time to be giving, he said he loved a chip for giver. Don't give gradually, and sometimes when we give, we give out of wrong uh, uh, motive, the ambition. Okay, I, I guess I do it because everybody else is doing it. No, 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 no. You know, you're doing it because you're supposed to be doing it because you have the love of God in you. But sometimes we do things out of the wrong motive, out of the wrong expectations. As Apostle was talking about, the uh. Giving and how people be uh, uh, competitive of giving, you know, it's, it's a shame. You want to outdo the next person. You know, we we supposed to be uh, uh, united as one, but it just saw so, it's so sad how people want to outdo one another. Want to everything is a competition in in this in the ministry and things. But to me, it really stood out. 
Uh, do we give ourselves gradually to God? Or are we giving, are we giving uh, uh, our time and, and, and talents to God because this is something that pleases God? Or are we giving it gradually? That just came to me. Uh, before I get to you, but that made you mind, mind me of sometimes we, we call ourselves giving to others in God's name as a payment plan, I call it, because sometimes we give, we use God's name. Oh, I'm going to give this to him because God's going to bless me. You know, it's like you're, you're, like, you're using it as, it's that's still that giving from your heart because your mentality is, I'm just going to give this to him because God's going to bless me. You're looking for that, that payment. That's still, that's not, that's not giving at your heart. You're looking for a payment. You should give, just give generously, generously from your heart. And you walk in God's name, but don't give because you look and say, I'm just gonna give that to him, come see God gonna bless me tomorrow, whatever. That's not that's not that's not the way it go about it. That you won't get your blessings that way. I just want to get that off. Go ahead, brother, brother. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this in. I know there's more people out there who are spiritual about this than I am. But you remember back in Genesis where mm -hmm. there was two sacrifices given to the Lord. One was um, Cain and one was Abel. Mm -hmm. And um, they gave of what they had, their first fruits and everything. Well, Abel, he'd given, and the way I understand it, the, the reason why God accepted his sacrifice differently than he did uh, Cain's was because he gave with the right heart. He had a heart after God, where I think Cain sort of, gave reluctantly or because he felt like he had to give or something in that. I know somebody's got something to that. I was trying to find it myself, but mm -hmm. the difference between the, sac the different the offerings that was given was Cain and Abel. That's the secret of how God wants us to give. Amen. Uh, I know that kind of remind me also too uh, when we give Judgingly, when we get somebody that, okay, I get an example where one time I was driving trucks and this this young this older man he wanted something to eat, and uh, my mom went first went to, uh, he probably wanted to go get something to drink this and that this and that, but uh, I gave the money to him, but I was it was grudgingly, you know I should just gave and just let the rest left the rest in God's hands. So when I gave the man the money, he was hungry. I he went to the store as I was sitting there with my truck having my lunch. He went in the store, came back and sat on the curb and was eating some cheese. And that almost brought tears to my eye because I judged that man. It was not for me to judge. If I'm going to give with a cheerful heart, just give. Let God be his judge, you know what I'm saying? So I think that bothered me because I was doing it grudgingly and I was judging this individual. So so we got to be mindful of things like that too when we give. And uh, not to so much be so judgmental of people or... or um, looking at a person and judge him in the wrong way, you know, because what we think. But we got to let God be the judge with that. Just give cheerfully if you choose to in God's name. But don't try to be so judgmental on one of our givings. Amen. Amen. Uh, you answer that, Brother Bud? Uh, yeah, I was hoping somebody would have that knowledge of that. I was trying to find it myself because there's quite a difference there because that's why <laughs> You know, Cain got he killed his brother because he accepted his gift, but why didn't he accept mine? You know, so I know somebody's got an answer to that because that's what the heart does. God, that's sacrificing to God what what belonged to them. So I know somebody's got an answer to that. Mm -hmm. so anybody right, got guess for brother Bud? Uh, let us know. In the uh, meantime, right, meantime, let's move on. We got two hands up. Oh, let's see. Okay. Uh, is you first, you, Minister? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, I just, um, what Brother Bud spoke on, it always spoke with me. And I had asked a question to um, a minister one time. And they were telling me about Cain and Abel, the truth that it was that, um, uh, his sacrifice wasn't accepted because he didn't really give it from the heart, but also it was not a, a blood sacrifice. 
and a blood sacrifice had to be, be made. And I want to know if that's Teresa Elder or uh, Apostle yeah. Elder could give me any information on that to let yeah. me know if that was, you know, the right thing for the pro because, you know, I don't hear a lot of people saying anything right. about that. So, you know, when Brother Bud said that, that question rolls back up in my mind. So anybody yeah. have anything to say on that? I know I'm still searching. I know you're that. on mute, Minister Isaiah. <clears throat> uh, Apostle Kim, sorry. Oh, okay, I was going to try to answer the question for uh, y'all about Cain, the Cain and Abel. Abel gave out of his first fruit. Cain gave out of what he thought God just wanted to have. He picked what he gave God. He chose what he gave him. And he didn't give it out the abundance. He gave it out of what he had left. Yeah. That's the difference. Amen. Seems like there's just a little bit more. The yeah. attitude of giving. Does anybody say something? I'll let anybody else have anything. Oh, no. Uh, I'd really like to know more about that. Okay. Does anybody uh, come up with anything more to answer on um, Brother Buzz's questions? Let us know. Pastor um, Teresa has her hand up. Good. Okay. Good, Pastor. That's why I'm <laughs> All right. To tag on to what Apostle Kemp said, which is true from that perspective, Cain gave leftovers. Abel gave the first. So that's like when you cook food for someone, you give them the hot plate. You don't give them, you don't give them the food left over from yesterday, especially when you're cooking for something today. But then on top of that, of course, like we said, Cain's heart. Cain wanted accolades. He wanted to, he wanted God to pump him up for what he did for him. As if he's supposed to, you know get approval for it no it was supposed to be um it was supposed to be a gift from the boys abel gave a see when you give a gift you go all when you go sh as they like especially for christmas you go all out shopping for somebody when it's your loved ones when it's your husband or wife you don't just throw anything together for the gift and so Cain threw his gift together. It was jacked up. Abel took time with it. You see what I'm saying? Abel took time with it. The part about the blood sacrifice, I don't, I'm going to go deeper with that, but I swear I have, I'm looking and I've heard about that. I was looking at one of my um, <clears throat> seminary books that, um, that, um, when I was in seminary, we discussed about that too. Um, help me, Holy Spirit. I don't think it was because he didn't give a blood sacrifice because they was the first ones on the earth. So, <laughs> and then on top of that, if you kind of think about it, you know, why would God want a blood sacrifice? You know, at that particular time, it was not time for Christ to come. We did, this is the Old Testament. So what, what, what that, you know, when you think about it, but I will go further with it and um, look into that book that um, when I had, when I was in seminary, school, we did discuss about that part. But um, most importantly, uh, Cain, God didn't accept Cain because number one, of course, his heart, he came to God like as if to say, look, I did this for you. As if God's supposed to be like, oh, Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you know, kissing his butt because of what he gave. When here it is, God gave, when God created and, and made everything. So why should he have to kiss his butt? Because he gave him something. Guess what? Some of us act that way. That's why the heart is like, like we all said earlier. And like the scriptures we said, the heart is deceitful. That's why you got to guard it. Like an infant, you can't keep your eyes off your heart in your mind, the heart of the man. 
You can't keep you because some of y'all, y'all sitting here right now, your mind all over the place. You only, you're only participating, or you, you're, you're here, but you're not here in the presence of the Lord. Yeah, you here. You love God. Not saying you don't. Not being judgmental, but you're not fully here because when we get off, some of you, your mind gonna take over. You are gonna forget all about what we talked about because some of you don't understand being in the presence of the Lord, even through ministry. You know what I'm saying? Something you should be taking him with you. You should be making him real inclusive when you get off of whether you're here with us, whether you're in church, you on another program or whatever. Some of y'all are doing it out of routine. God sees it in his mind. So Cain was like in similar the same way. They knew they was given an offering. And so, and then of course, not the uh when God didn't accept, what's the first thing happen when somebody don't accept your gift? You can get offended. You want to know why. Then you can get jealous. All of those elements is what built him up to kill his brother. Jealousy, rage. See, see, my thing is this: you're gonna be all that pumped up. Why you don't get? Why you ain't get pumped up and, and, and roll up on God? Get up in God face. Why you? Why Cain ain't get all pumped up wanting to fight God? But you killed your brother. So see, you want to bring that up to our time. We have to do the same thing. Some of you put more emphasis on stuff in yourself and people, but you're not man or woman enough to come into the presence of the Lord, but you expect him through because you may say a prayer that he's supposed to answer all the time. God don't answer all prayers. Why? Why should he when you don't even enter in correctly? And that's why the heart is so important. The heart of your mind to guard it because a lot of us say a lot of things, but your actions and your lifestyle is far from it. Most of you would never want us to go behind. If we was a bug, we, you would never want us in your house at all. At all. And that's real talk. Not that I'm not upset at all. I'm just showing God is just showing me these things since this mountaintop season. And I'm bringing it to you. These are the things that he is. He is using his microscope light flashlight on all of us. Some of you have some of you are being flashlight in areas you're not paying attention to, and especially in your mind. God sit with you every day, wondering why is you thinking about that? Why are you about to do that? Why you keep saying that? Why you keep picking up that phone and texting that person? Who told you that? When are you gonna really come and spend time with me? Amen. And so, until you mind, until you get control of your mind and put your mind, put God first in your mind, and then everybody else second and third, then you, you you'll realize. Then you can hear from Him better. You'll understand His order for your life, and wondering why He's ordering your steps a certain way. Some of y'all keep forcing your steps to go other ways. Meaning you're, you're trying to follow behind people, follow behind organizations, want to be a part of stuff. When God's saying, follow me here. But no, y'all look down there and be like, oh, I ain't going down there with God. That that, that street look crazy. Where are you taking me, God? Because see, we all have in this flesh, everybody has the nosy mentality. We got to know first. We got to know before we want to do for God. But see, you know, but see, it's sad because some of you will jump when a person say do something, whether it's your loved ones, your husband, your wife, your your children, if you'll jump for that, you especially your job. You'll jump. So when are you going to jump like that when you hear the voice of God? Or is it that you really don't know the voice of God? You have you're because some of some of you are leaning and some of you listen to yourself too much and y'all try to say that it's God. Yeah. Because it's the right thing to do, you want to say is God, but it's not the God thing to do. Mm -hmm. You keep saying, okay, yeah, I'm gonna um 
I'm going to go, I'm going to do this for God. I'm going to do, I'm, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, because this is the work of the Lord. But did God tell you to do it? See, God don't need no help. I'm a, I'm a give to them. I'm a give to the homeless. I'm a, I'm a give to the homeless so much, you know, <clears throat> as some of you say, I'm a give to the homeless so much. Okay. That's nice. But did God tell, but did God tell you to do it? Amen. So that's all I want to say with that one. Uh, Brother Bud got to say it though. Yeah. I was going to touch base with this something else on that. I, I was still listening to everything Pastor said, and this tying in was still doing research. I love doing research because that's one way that I try to really find out what's really being going on. The difference between the two was Abel gave what God wanted, whereas Cain gave what he himself wanted. Abel was obedient and Cain was disobedient. Abel chose and offered the firstborn and the fatlings, while Cain offered either the ears or together with the fruits which were there at the time. So I maybe someone make something out of that because when I heard that, I you know it really as I started reading about Genesis and stuff. And I really always wondered about that. You know, they were both given to God. But then I heard that Abel's heart was a lot different than Cain's. But and you got like, I don't mean to cut you off, um, oh, Brother Bud. I'm sorry. I don't that's mean it. to cut you off, but I want to just, just jump in right there and then I'm going to pull back out. But see, okay. that's the thing. Remember, sin was already in the camp yep. when Cain and Abel were born. Yep. That's how, that's why he was able to do that because his father and mother had sin. So sin was in the camp. Meaning, remember when they ate from the fruit, now their eyes was open, meaning, uh-oh, like having a reprobated mind. You got the free, what you, what you choose to do, you going, whatever your choices is, it's on you. Right. It's like God took his hand off. It's on you now. Yeah. Put them out, and so now when they had the two sons, the sin they came through the womb. The, her womb was now sin contaminated. Okay. That's how he was able to think like that because his parents had took of the fruit. So now he has a heart where, like we know, you don't have to teach them to do bad. Why? Because bad already in them. We gotta teach them to do good. And that's messed, and that guess what? And that's since the beginning of time. Ever since even Adam disso, um, disso was disobedient, bad badness had um thank you this spirit put it trying to make it simple, especially for social media, was already there. That it was already in them. So, and then the temptation, the feeling of being tempted was already in it because it was in the flesh. See, our feelings and all of that is in the flesh suit, not in the spirit. That's why we have to die daily and that's why the flesh and the spirit fight every day. It's the devil and God in you that fights every day. You got to fight to make yourself do good because some of us, all of us have had, we've woken up and we just wanted to beat the hell out of somebody. We've oh, see that that comes up first. It's easy to lean into that because it's in it's in this flesh suit. It's in our suit and it's been with us since all of us was born through the womb. And so that's why God had to we had to go through life. You know, life. All the generations went through what it went through until Christ had to nullify it to seal the deal. Like, okay, enough is enough. Once the Old Testament was over with, and he said, okay, now the New Testament, the new, the new, you know, generation came up. Now it's time to seal the deal. Somebody have their mic open. I hear a bunch of feedback. Please read your mic. I hear it too. So <clears throat> it's like it was all. So once Christ sealed it. It was done, but guess what? That's why he left. That, that's why Christ didn't just leave, and that was it. He left us the Holy Spirit. Why? Because sin is still in us. 
Christ knew, okay, I got to leave the Holy Spirit. It's your turn. I got to leave you with them. Because if I don't leave them with sin being in them since 2000 years, since the beginning of earth, it's not going to, I believe that it ain't going to really make the way for Christ to come back. Like he's like, we know he's coming back. That's why. And also to give us a fair chance to see if we're going to choose to receive salvation and also help others. That's the whole thing here. From Christ, from the New Testament after Christ died until now, the whole thing about life is giving you an opportunity and the hopes that you're going to strive and you're going to you're going to keep God inclusive until Christ come back. Some of you making your walk with God, your relationship with God, because based on what the world has taught you or what you see in the world, you're making it too hard. And it's not that hard because just like you have a relationship with is your relationship with your children hard. No, it's not. It's it's the it's the disciplinary and it's deciding what moves and how you're going to navigate through life with. Them. That's the challenge. Why is that? I was glad you asked it. Past, past, why is that? Because it's the sin within. See, everything would have been easy if we had this flesh suit on. If everything would be easy, we wouldn't have to be asking why people don't want to follow instructions, why people don't want to do this, why the leaders are I'm compromising, because they because it's sin in the camp. When you start, this is how you know you're moving from God when you're so easily swayed and so tempted and enticed to do something that feels good instead of you're working for it, instead of you earning it rightfully. And then when you can humble yourself, be open with God and with others and apologize because something small like that, a lot of us don't do. Y'all do things and you know you're wrong, but you won't say those words, I apologize. I was wrong. I was wrong. I'm glad that God taught me to easily say that. Because guess what? I ain't going to be it for nobody. I'm, I, I don't take nobody to be it with me. Because I, first of all, I never, my heart will never intentionally hurt nobody. I don't plot and plan hurt nobody. Social media, rich classroom, period. Because I love to sleep good. I love to sleep good. And then I know I got an answer for it and I love him more. And so all of us have to strive even within our families, because guess what? They're the closest. They're the closest audience as well as the closest um, opponents that you're going to enter. You're going to enter react with first. Some of y'all keep failing the test because you don't even do it with your family members. But yet you want to buck up against a stranger or you want to buck up with your spiritual brothers and sisters or your pastors or your leaders or you're quick to buck up on me. But yet here it is. You got family member that has done or I'm trying to correct you. You got family members that disrespect you with their mouth. Don't care about your spiritual life like I do. You ain't going to buck up on them, but you'll buck up on me because I'm trying to correct. That don't even make any sense. I still ain't got that one, that. And since me and God, he know that. That don't, whoever there's somebody is showing you by action that they're caring about your spiritual life. They want the best for you. They want you to go this way so you can reap the rewards, not reap death. I want you to reap life. But yet you got family members that you allow to talk to you any kind of way, use you any kind of way. Do come in your house, take over, eat up all your food, sleep all night in your base. Just come in and cause, oh, cause y'all blood. Oh, cause y'all came through the same wound. Y'all came through the same sin canal. And God frowns on that. Because guess what? Y'all, y'all will let family do that. Y'all don't even care about the blood Jesus um, shed. His blood out trumps it all. His blood out trumps family all the way. Period. Whether we like it or not. Because if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, some of you wouldn't wake up using your limbs like you do. Some of you wouldn't be in your right state of mind. Some of you wouldn't have the things. You wouldn't have no soap. You wouldn't have no shoes, no socks, no toothpaste, no toothbrush, no comb, hair. 
No, none of that. No wigs. Please don't take the ponytails and stuff. But we wouldn't have none of that. And so we have to learn to have a grateful heart and guard the heart. Guard the heart. Stop making it easy for the devil to get into your ear. Stop making it real easy for him to get to you and your family. Period. Some of y'all let y'all open your door wide open and say, "Come on in, Satan," because you're discerning. You're, you're not looking at the spiritual eyes. Remember, he dresses up in sheep clothing. He always likes to pretend he's God, and he likes to jump in people that he that he like. I, I, I bet I can get them to compromise, and I'm talking about the compromise saints out there. Yeah, out here on social media. Yeah, you praying, hooting and hollering, speaking in tongues, all that stuff. But then in reality, you sitting on the phone in your home, you lying, cheating, stealing, cussing, fornicating, all of that crap. Cheating on your husband and wife. But oh, church time Sunday, you got on your Sunday best. This, is, this ain't the hour. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Isaiah. That came from me. I don't even know no, why. No. I should have just stayed. I should have just stayed behind me. But it's just something about this season. But I'm gonna go ahead and let you handle your class. Minister, <laughs> um, Elder Marshall has his hand up. Yes, Brother I see. Good. Go ahead, Elder Marshall. God bless you. Thank 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 you. Yeah, she had I said minister too. first, and I said Elder Bosch, but Elder Bosch has to say <laughs> Elder the Bosch, yeah, yeah, I see it. Go ahead, Elder. She said a lot, you know. Yes, pass it in the nose. All that that she mentioned is 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 due to the heart of the matter. The way we carry, the way we do things, is always comes from our hearts and our hearts' decision, as we mentioned about the mindset. Our mindset is all screwed up because we don't have the right mindset. That's why our heart dictates us on how we live our lives and things and how we allow things to happen in our lives. Just like you know, we was talking about we was talking about Cain and Abel. Everything was done by the heart and mind. Each one, each one gave what they thought, what they thought. Would, would be best for God and, and things. And each one was hearts was in a different position when they gave. So we have to understand that what Pastor said and what's been mentioned about what's going on it comes from our hearts. That's why we're living in the world today. That's why this world, the people, leaders, the leaders and is things they they doing things for the wrong motives when it comes to their heart. Their heart is is, is wicked. The heart is wicked. That's why we are really living in the way we are living today. So I just want to let everyone know, social media class, what is your motive? Where is your heart at today? Are you really giving your time and things to God like we ought to? Are are we are we standing around and just allowing things to happen, <clears throat> knowing that we ought to, as Pastor was just putting it, speak up and and do what's right in God's sight. <clears throat> we have to be careful. We really have to be careful when it comes to our hearts. So I just wanted to put that out there because I was listening to what Pastor said. When everything that she had mentioned, it it, 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 it comes to the heart, the heart of the matter. Where is your heart? Amen. Amen. It's, it's so powerful the things that come to your heart, which is your mind. But even by social media, even us in the ministry, we got to be mindful. Even as we get off this line and we just talk and say the things we say. We got to take a step back and do a self-examination. That's one thing we fall short at. We do what we do, we say what we say, but we don't take that take a moment to have a self-examination of ourselves. And sometimes that's what we need too. Even, even in our prayer, before I do our prayer, we reach out to God. Take time out to have a self-examination. That's how you find out a lot of your errors. And that's why I say always stay repentant. Because sometimes we make moves we don't understand. 
That's why we need God in life. That's why you need to continue to prayer. But take time to do a self-examination. Take time to take your breath and say, okay, wow. Do you examine yourself? Sometimes you can realize some of your errors. And as you come to God and you repent this, you let him know and ask for forgiveness. But you've got to be self-examined of yourself because we can always run off out of our mouth and just do things out of emotion, out of our heart, you know, saying it could be wrong. So see, we got to take time spiritually, take self-exam as we talk to God. Amen. Brother Bud, you have something you want to say? Pastor Risa held her hand up. Oh, Pastor Risa, I'm sorry. So one more time, 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 <laughs> okay. one more time, social media. That I'm <laughs> upset because I gotta take my med my medicine. But um, cool. Cool. also what just to tag on is that what Elder Marshall was saying, mm -hmm. and uh, you know all of us, you know, because we're all on one accord with it. All right, Holy Spirit. Okay, He said, take my time with it. Yes. It's funny how, like we, like we're all saying. We have to consistently build our relationship with God. Most of us, and it's going around. Hey, it's, it's, it's just it, it amazes me because this week God got me, got me real quiet, and I see it now from His perspective. Everyone, if you noticed, you know across the across the social media, other organizations. Everybody on this Holy Week, Passion Week this week. Yes. All this get ready, get crazy. Don't even don't and don't jump off the boat. Social media for real. Everybody on Holy Week. The day, yesterday, um, what yesterday was Good Friday. The okay. day, you know, and did you we had the Palm Sun. You know, everybody on this religious thing, you know, trying to wrap Christ. Death uh -huh. up in it in a package mm -hmm. nicely, and then want to give people permission to remember the life and death of Christ on a weekend. Why aren't you remembering the life and death of Christ every day? Amen. Why aren't you? Why, why gotta be only because guess what? After Monday. It's done. Ain't nobody going to be pre preaching. And I'm talking to those out there with organizations or whatever, the prosperity preachers, the, the God, Lord, go God, along, get along, gang. Y'all ain't going to be talking about no Christ going to cross. Y'all not going to be reliving all of that the three days. Ain't nobody going to be talking about the Garden of Gethsemane. Ain't nobody going to be talking about none of that. When Monday come, because Monday, because what, what that, what, Sunday is, Quote mm -hmm. Easter trying to wrap it around Christ. I don't know why they doing that because it's making my skin itch, making me itch. Like the bunny rabbit. <laughs> the religion, religion makes me itch. Cause how you gonna package Christ with a rabbit? Don't get me started. Mm -hmm. it, oh man. Okay, God, God said it's bring it real. We we'll go there. <laughs> he said it's funny how and all and most of you, because I've watched y'all make posts. Because you can't sit up here and agree with the world, but then you want to say you want to have it your way with God. Either you're going to love him and respect him, whether we're all together or not. We all here. Y'all saying y'all got it, but then some of y'all going to get off and wish somebody happy Easter. Uh -uh. That don't even make any sense. It's just like, bother me. Somebody said it to me today. I said, I don't celebrate Easter. Ooh. I did and they too. was like, huh? I was like, what a rabbit got to do with Christ? Mm -hmm. I said, I said, let that lay. Mm -hmm. I had five happy Easter's. Uh, I don't celebrate Easter, but you can have a good weekend. You have a good weekend. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. And see, this is the world. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Of course you didn't know that I just told you. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm asked me, you know, because you know how when you're talking to some worldly people and I'm and they say, why? I said, because what do a rabbit got to do with Christ? Mm -hmm. One don't even go with that. Did, is there a story about the rabbit giving his life for the world? Mm -hmm. So what do the rabbit and Christ got in common? They have nothing. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna be worshiping no no Easter a uh, rabbit and telling children to go look for some eggs. The rabbit laid their eggs, huh? <laughs> they not looking for Christ. They looking for some mm -hmm. eggs and some money in it. 
And then you want to, but hold up. But then Sunday, it was Palm Sunday. Oh, you want to shake palms. Oh, now you want to acknowledge God. But then Sunday come. Oh, it's Easter Sunday. It's all twisted. Eva, you're going to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Or you're not. And that means respect him too. These are all pagan holidays. None of y'all should not be participating in them. Period. 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 I don't care if nobody don't like it. Period. Okay, we're over Easter. What's the next holiday coming up? Memorial Day. What that got to do with God? Hear me clearly. No disrespect to the, the veterans and all that. God bless you that you made the decision you made. But the reality is, unless your heart was for God for your service, then that's a highly God bless you. But if you made your career out of it because it's something that you want to do, guess what? That's, that's going to be between you and God. You don't get no accolades for that. Why? Because you chose to do it. God probably had told many of you, I don't want you going into the military for the government. I'm going to want you to do this. Oh, they ain't going to like, I told you, y'all pray for me. This is the year I am not going to be light. Y'all pray for the pastor. Because I need it. Because and now God is showing me because he's trusting me with some things. Just like I know in our private conversation, I'm telling y'all. And he's hot man. And he's getting close. I mean, it's getting real close. Baltimore, the bridge is gone. Yeah. That's a sign. Gee, that's what when the Holy Spirit, when the last thread is up, that's it. When God lifts grace and mercy, and the Holy Spirit say, Okay, I'm done. I'm checked out. Y'all can stay down here. I'm out of here. I'm going up there, being on the other side of the fall. Jesus on the right, Holy Spirit on the left, and the Trinity is back together. <laughs> they be like, I'm out of here. That means all three bridges. You see what I'm saying? All three connections, think about it, is done. One down, two to go. Wheel me in. I'm getting off. But let it lay. Social media, let it lay. And I and I, I love y'all immensely for those that earnestly and sincerely and truthfully care about my spiritual growth and truly praying for me. Because I'm praying for you and loving you with all my heart because I love God first. And I make sure me and him is right so that me and you could be right. I'm Well, let me get hold up. God told me go back with it. Me and him is right. Then Teresa got to make sure Teresa right. Then Teresa can love and do everything right. And we always going to be right. And we're going to be all right. Because in the end, we win. Minister Rowe. Wow. Amen. 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 You know, Pastor Teresa, you hit a nerve on the day. I had one sister, first post she sent me, in well, the first message she sent me said, Happy Easter. I uh I told her I didn't celebrate Easter. Then she sent me four more. I just had to to to, to let her know that I do not celebrate. Easter. That was so disrespectful. It Go was peg. I said I do. I refuse to celebrate a pagan holiday. I am pagan. I'm gonna try to make you say Happy Easter back to Jesus her. Christ. And I gave her. I googled it so I can print it on that and showed her. That they celebrate the, the fertility goddess Esther, and you mean to tell me this is supposed to be a religious holiday? No, it just so happened that Jesus rose on the day that the pagans were celebrating this holiday, and so the society or uh, the religious leaders at that time that didn't like Jesus. Going to turn around and going to try to wrap it up and make it a part of our, you know, a Christianity. Uh, uh, but no, the Lord did not tell me to celebrate no Easter. He told me to remember his death, burial, and resurrection. And that's Amen. what I remember. And that's what I 
tell them, yeah, I recognize uh, Good Friday to a certain extent because we every year is a different year, uh, day. So I'm not telling you that it's that, you know, that 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 exact day. But like I told, um, I think it was um, might have been uh, Mister Isaiah. Now, where is this Holy Week? If you're living for the Lord, every week supposed to be holy. Every day, every hour was supposed every to be holy. Hour. That's it. That's it. So it was we got really holy disrespectful week. when I told her the first time I did not celebrate Easter. And then she going to turn around and send me four more. And I just had to tell her. I had to. It just. It, it, uh, it hit me. I said, Lord, help me. If I'm wrong for doing this too, but I don't believe I am, Lord. So, but she mm -hmm. needs to know. And she called herself religious and saved. Yeah, that religious folks make me itch. Well, no Rose, you mm -hmm. know what I want to say to you on that? Because we just we just tag teaming together. But um, the bad the bad thing about it and the rest of you have to understand. God been crying for years. You ain't doing him no favor celebrating no holidays. Cause mm -hmm. and then you know what? And I'm gonna tell and I'm gonna tell you what he told me. He said that sometimes that's the only time some of y'all talk to him. He he has mm -hmm. given you three hundred and sixty five days. Come on now. And all y'all talk to him on one, that's when you're on one day, Christmas, New Year's, now we got Easter. Y'all don't talk to him no other time. Y'all don't even invite him in there. Y'all don't even think about God. Because some of you don't even get up and say, good morning, Lord, on a regular day without nobody unctioning you. See, that's how yep. you know it's the world. The world unction and pushing it on people. Come on, everybody. Come on. It's easy. Come on. We gotta, we gotta act holy. See, religion is learned. Spiritual is a lifestyle. Hallelujah. Holy week. You you, you gonna make you holy. You're supposed to be holy. Oh, I guess you just holy one day out the year. With your church outfit, with your church outfit on, I guess that just all you hope. Well, then that's what if that's all you gonna give God. Then why should you expect him to answer any prayer any other time during the year if your high heart's getting trouble? Why should he listen to you? And I'm talking to the people in the remnant. Oh, you holy tomorrow? Oh yeah, y'all gonna be doing y'all Sunday best. Y'all gonna be hooping and hollering ten or fifty five rows and want God to answer. Your prayer, but I bet you by Monday you are gonna be back to being a hypocrite, whore, and heathen. I don't know how that came out, Minister Rose. Real me and I, I said I'm done for real, y'all. Better, y'all better. Stop. Okay, <laughs> good. I got to say, do what y'all just did, though. Y'all get that phone call from your favorite prosperity preachers this week because you know they they got to fill those seats up. You know, ain't nobody gonna be able to sit down this week. They're gonna have a lot of room next week, so they don't want you messing up that money this week. You got oh, those yeah, car payments yeah. to make. Y'all pray for me. That's right, y'all. Pray. Because right. that's the worst thing people want and the prosperity is for people's mm -hmm. eyes to open up. Nobody wants us to know the truth. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we have to fight so hard to learn it? Mm -hmm. Why you think why you think your family members, you you know, you're being set apart. You ain't supposed to be with the go along, get along gang. Mm -hmm. And it's not that you're supposed to be set apart to poke fun at them or to make them feel bad. Uh -huh. You just you just have to sit apart and let them see the glory of the Lord shine mm -hmm. right through you. And then when uh -huh. they see your light shining, they suppose you're supposed to just stay until they come. And then they like, you know what, Rose, why are you shining so bright? And then that's when you know, oh, and then they'll say, when it comes to a situation. I haven't heard from you. Well, you don't do this no more. Well, you don't say this. What's going on? Boom. Here you go. That's where you spread the gospel. But where I was blind, now I can see. And I'm praying that you will open up your eyes, social media, because some of you are still blind, but then some of y'all are still blind on some things, but then some of y'all get up and put your blinders on because you're not man or woman enough to deal with reality and truth. You don't want to be set free because you know why you're scared to be set apart because when you're set apart, you got to be alone. You can't handle why God ain't going to let too many people sit with you. When he sets you apart, it ain't like he's setting you and your kids and your husband. And he put all y'all together and put y'all here. No. When he sets us apart, God's children versus the devil's children. Hallelujah. We are set apart. But one thing about it, we got to remember. God loves us. His love out trumps any love on this earth. 
any promises that people say and they don't back up anything they see, even from the littlest thing man i'm gonna be over in five minutes five minutes i came by here and he showed up but if jesus say i'll be there in five minutes guess what he always on the promise Praise God. Reel me in. Praise God. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. So the truth. Amen. So I uh, guess we're running. Anybody any last words uh, before we uh, move on out? All right. I'd like to thank you, social media. They're going to they gonna put, uh, they're going to shoot this uh, ministry tonight. They're going to be talking about us real bad now. They're going to be talking about us real bad. You know when the video get uploaded tonight, they going to be up. They're going to shoot. Up to mess with their money. Right. Have mercy. I couldn't do nothing but laugh. I said, oh, somebody just got slapped all in the face with this. Oh, my God. I mean, just really don't have no filth and don't care. Just tell the truth and shame the devil. That's all I can say. Keep me, keep me praying. Pray for me, prophetess said. I feel you at this point. Pray, hold me. Hold me. Look, hold me like a baby so I can rub your head. Hold me. The season I'm in, hold the pastor. Oh, my God. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, sorry, brother Bud Willison, you better Willison, Brother Minister Isaiah, you letting the kids and the students run wild. Oh, I see that now. I will put you in the corner. <laughs> well, God is God is laughing. Maybe God is good. Please, please, please. Amen. But the truth be told, you just set the captives free. If you don't want to be Hallelujah. free, Amen. Don't, don't 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 invite yourself into things that are spiritual and cultural, because Amen. Jesus came to break the law. And break the curse over our life, over our lives, so that we can live in Him by recognizing that He was the one that shed His blood for the remissions of our sin. Have mercy, you spoke the truth. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know I me, mean? my butt. I know. <laughs> Praise God. You know, you just took the words out of my mouth. I'm so grateful that we have the platform to be able to share our lives with each other in our hearts and our prayers with each other continually. And to realize that, yes, not everybody in this world, most, almost everybody, most everybody in this world, they're in one way and we're going another way. And we know what direction we're going. And I praise God that we're able to share our hearts, our lives, and pure love from Christ in us. That we can be able to come to a platform and, and pour our hearts out and say, love you all. And thank you for the words of wisdom that come from the word of God and from your hearts. The word of love. Praise God. Love you all. Yeah. Uh, Time for the announcements. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, we ask that uh, everyone will please join us next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 6 p.m. Central Standard for our prayer conference call. You can go to either one of our pages and find that number. It will be posted on the page. Or even if you remember, you can go to the group. It is sent at the top. Also, you can join us uh, for our Bible study, which is every Friday and Saturday night, unless we are having a panel discussion that Saturday night. And that is at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We, the women of Soldiers on Fire for Christ, would like all the women to join us this Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 12 noon Central Standard Time. We have such a wonderful time with the, the panel discussion. And I know uh, if you all saw the, the, the video of the men, it was powerful. I was, you know, just elated at them, how they did. But you, you a lady and you wants to be a part of this panel discussion that we're having tomorrow, please uh, contact myself uh, with your email address. You can message me via Facebook Messenger. 
or either you can minister to Pastor Teresa Vinny or our Pastor Robin Rowley with your um your Facebook. I mean, with your Facebook, you know, with your email address. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. In any of our upcoming events, you can find them posted on our pages or either the group page, Soldiers on Fire for Christ on Facebook. We as Soldiers on Fire for Christ has partnered with St. Jude to raise money to help these babies, these children that have cancer. This child disease has plagued these children and their families, and there's no, you know, there's no reason that if you are a child of God that your heart don't go out to these people. You need to dig deep into your pockets and into your heart and give. The Lord has placed it on Pastor Teresa's heart that we raise a, a million dollars. And with your help, we can do this. When you give, it will help go towards the medication, the research, the room and board for the, for the parents. And, and anything that the children may need. They even said that they give toys for the children so they can have when they're staying there at the St. Jude Hospital. Amen. And you can go to either one of our pages again. It is posted on our page. And we, uh, I know I myself and most of the members have it hit at the top of their page. So you don't have to scroll through looking for anything. And we also have it in our story as well as a Soldiers on Fire for Christ group page. So once you go to the, the post about the St. June Foundation, and we actually scroll down to the bottom where there's a picture of the little boy, and you press on that link. Because many say, well, how do I give? The link is right there underneath the little boy. Press on that, and it will take you directly to the St. June Foundation. It gives you suggestion amount to give, but there also is a other button at the bottom of, of that in the right hand corner. That other button you can put, type in the amount that you want. St. Jude is asking for a minimum of five dollars, and I'm quite sure you have five dollars. You know. Five dollars can barely get a cup of coffee. A good cup of coffee is over five dollars. So I'm asking you to sacrifice that and give to these children. Give to their parents that are going through this ordeal. And I assure you, none of this money is going in the uh, Soldiers on Fire for Christ pocket. All this money goes directly to St. Jude. Once you put in your dollar amount and push Done, it goes directly to St. Jude, and you will immediately get an email address telling you, I mean, a, an email <laughs> telling you that they thank you for the amount that you have given. They also will have you to fill out where your address, and they will send you things in the mail as well. Amen? So we, we don't, like I said, we don't see any of this money. It goes directly to the St. Jude foundation and they distribute it the way they see fit distribute it. So we ask you once again to just give out of your hearts and in, in your pockets. Amen. These have been our announcements. Now govern yourselves accordingly. May God bless you all. Okay, well, um, Elder Boss, you want to take us on in prayer? Praise God. Let us pray. Dear gracious Father, I come for the throne of grace. Say thank you, Father God, for this wonderful class that we have participated in, Father God. And I pray that those who view the video, Father God, will get some understanding of what is the requirements and what we should be doing as believers so that we can be more pleasing in your sight. Let each one of us, Father God, use our talents and gifts, not gradually, Father God, but with joy and ex and, and, and with joy and with excitement and with zeal, knowing, Father God, that when we use our talents and gifts, that we are leading others to you, Father God, and let the hearts of the people, because we love to use uh, the heart. 
Father God, saying we love this news that's saying, Father God, that you know our hearts, Father God. But yes, you really do know our hearts. So let us not make excuses, Father God, because you know our hearts. Let our hearts, Father God, line up with your will. Whatever your will need to be done, let it be done, Father God. Let us go ahead and continue to be those disciples that you have called us to be. Each and every one of us has a purpose, Father God, and, and that purpose is to please and worship you. So I just thank you for the teacher, Father God, and I thank you for each individual who took the time out to participate in the class. And I thank you for those who are going to view the video as well, Father God. So as we get ready to depart, one for another, but never from your presence, Father God, I ask you to keep us. Keep us in your safe and loving arms. And I ask you giving me travel to mercy, Father God, as I prepare to get ready to head out to work. So I just thank you, Lord, and I praise you for all the things that you have done and things you're going to continue to do with us and through us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.